The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. We're going to have Bill Meridian of Cycles Research on today at 9.30, and tomorrow we'll have Stan Harley from, uh, from uh, um, Stock Cycles, so he'll be on on uh, Tuesday. So we'll start out today with the DAX like we usually do. I posted it in. As you can see, we had this monster volatility following the U.S. elections, as you can see here. But the chart that I really wanted to talk about today is the chart from um, 1929s through the um, 1940, uh, 1940s uh, when the bottom was in. What I'd like to just to show you, because I'm going to try to walk through what's happening as far as the cycle that we're seeing right now. But as you can see, we bottomed in 1932 at um, $41 in the Dow Jones. 16 of the Dow 30 stocks uh, will go bankrupt from uh, 29 through 38. Uh, also, the high in September was 383, and we didn't take that high out again for 25 years. Uh, but we did have a Gartley. Look at this Gartley that it had right in the midst of the worst time of the war in 1943. I mean, this was absolutely the worst time ever to buy stocks, uh, but because we were actually losing at that time. And uh, you can see that the market had already uh, figured out what was going on. So that's the main thing that we're looking at. But the one thing I wanted to go through is this cycle that we're over now, this super full moon. And if you didn't get to see it last night, go out tonight, folks, because you're not going to see anything like this for another 70 years. I mean, it's a, a pretty big event, and it is it's really quite spectacular, you know, out here uh, in the desert. That's the, the main thing. Now, we are looking at this super full moon. We haven't seen one since 1948. And so what I'm going to do now, this is going to be a little hard to see, but I'm going to post it in here. This is from our friend... Um, Norm Winsky sent me this. We were talking over the weekend about this cycle, and he was kind enough to send me some uh, information here. You'll notice if you look at the bottom of the chart there, uh, where you see a January, you'll see a little green arrow. Uh, that's when the market was making a top uh, in 1948. As you can see, uh, it made a top and backed off uh, into uh, March of that year, then had a big rally, and then finally bottomed. You know, in, and went down much, much lower down into 1943. But the reason why I want to show you this is this was 70 years ago. Now, 70 years ago to the day, if we're going to be looking at this, just take a look at what happened. Uh, we had a, an earthquake of um, magnitude uh, 7.2 in New Zealand, and we had an earthquake of 6.2 in the um, uh, Argentina. L look what happened to the day. January 25th, 1948, which was the super full moon, they had an 8.2 magnitude earthquake in the Philippines. Uh, in fact, it was so big, they, they gave it a name, the Lady KK earthquake. Uh, it had a tsunami and all the other stuff involved with it. But I, I'm sure that's just, uh, it's just coincidence would be my guess. It, that's probably it. Sure. How could anything like that mean anything at all? Anyway, there is a... Um, there's only one. <laughs> there's only one other person that is calling for a potential top here uh, today, uh, and that is uh, Tom Demark uh, out of Scottsdale, Arizona. Uh, I don't know anybody else. I, and the reason why I say that is, folks, uh, we've got a chance here because of a. There's a pattern that uh, a good friend of mine from many many years ago, uh, Bill Ohama, not Obama, Ohama. Bill was of Japanese descent. His broker was Jim Twentyman. And Jim, or, uh, Bill did all kinds of technical work, and uh, he had some, you know, some little patterns that are still out there, but they're not as popular because he passed away and nobody continued on, you know, to the move, uh, to, to what it was going on. But if we get above 2180 in the S&P uh, today and close up there, then this will certainly, 
you know, not be what will probably happen. But uh, he had a pattern that was uh, known as the uh, Titanic syndrome. Uh, this is similar to what uh, uh, Tom DeMarc is looking at. He looks at it a little different way because he does some wave counting. But basically, let me show you what this pattern is. If you'll take a look at this, you'll notice that the uh, Dow Jones Industrial Average went uh, exactly to the 1.27. Now, remember, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average that is not traded overnight. This is only traded. That's why you see this big gap up uh, on November uh, 9th. So uh, it went up, stopped exactly at the 1.27. That number is 18,899, I believe. So if we get above 19,000, this will tell us that we're probably going to be wrong. But notice that the advanced decline line, or excuse me, the new highs to new lows, look how quickly uh, it, it, it didn't even rally at all and then backed off. So that's the, that's the secret to the pattern. Now, in order for it to, uh, to, to work, it's got to be down. It's got to start going down and, go, and start going down immediately, if that's the case. Now, whether it's going to do that or not, I'm not sure. Uh, that number in the S&P, by the way, we'll just post that so you can take a look at it. You'll see that we hit that exact name number in the S&P, too, if you'll just be so patient here for me. You'll put this up. You'll see that we did the same thing. We came down to the 78.6 and then rallied straight up, uh, stopping at a 1.27 expansion of that previous move. We did not make a new high, uh, which is also uh, rather important. So we want to watch that, uh, what's going on at that point, just to keep an eye on uh, if, in fact, it does that. Now, the NASDAQ was much weaker, as we pointed out before. We want to put this one in and let you folks take a look what the NASDAQ did. Give me one second here, and uh, there you go. You'll see the NASDAQ, and I think it's trading in, It's trading around 47.70, I believe. I'm not even sure. It's down, It was unchanged just a little while ago, but I don't know where, where it is uh, at that particular time. So we want to watch that uh, very, very closely. Um, but those are the things that I'm looking at as far as cycles are related. So, yeah, it's trading 47.43, so it's actually, I believe, down a little bit. So that's, uh, you know, lining up with pretty much what we're watching here. So we got to keep a close eye on this one today and uh, because it, it would be a big trap. And believe me, I had a great deal of trepidation when I did my newsletter this week uh, to look at all this stuff. And I, I did it before I saw the Titanic syndrome. That was uh, sent it to me by uh, Ed Carlson for the Market Technicians Association out of, uh, uh, of Seattle. So... That's one of the things that we were going to be uh, watching uh, at this time here. So hold on one second here. Uh, my beepers are going off on some things. I want to be sure that I don't miss anything. Okay, there we go. And then we'll see what's happening and we'll be... Okay, all right. Give me one second here. I have to turn the, the, the euro is going nuts. We'll, we'll talk about that in just a second here. Uh, just takes a little bit of time here to do this. Sorry, folks. All right, let's just move on here, and we'll take a quick look here uh, at the euro because we're at, uh, as we know, we're at a moment of truth here. We're breaking out now, folks, in the um, – uh, let's just take a look at this here because I wanted to show you here. This is the uh, the, the dollar index, and now we're breaking out above this 99 level. I believe we're trading up in the 99.50 level. That tells us that the euro – is heading down into this uh it, it's already made the first level which is 107.28 this morning and the next level we're looking at is probably going to be around 106.80 TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS 
proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the Taz Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting tfnn.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN. FNN.com. Larry takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Okay, folks, the next thing I wanted to do is to go over this uh, full moon and new moon cycle that we see all the time. And we're over a super full moon, which means we have the moon is at perigee where it's as close as it gets. Uh, here in the desert uh, in Tucson, we have a mountain, Mount Lemon, right behind our house here, which is about 10,000 feet. And if you go about halfway up that mountain uh, on the night of the full moon like we had, uh, you'll see that you can almost touch it. It's so big that it's just uh, – it is really spectacular. If you want to see something, uh, just look outside your windows. If the weather's nice and you can see it, uh, you're not going to see another one for another 70 years like this. So it's a really big one. Uh, it's also related to earthquakes, as we've already seen. But I just wanted to show you here, this is the full moons and new moons as it relates to gold. I'll let you decide whether you think you could use this or not. Frankly, some of the hits are absolutely spot on. And uh, they look like they uh, really, really have some really great applicabilities. But, you know, here again, you know, you're the one that has to decide whether you want to uh, do that. Now, I'll also take a look at one here uh, in the wheat. And uh, wheat is uh, amazing because uh, the if you look at gold and if you look at the um, – and you look at the wheat, you'll notice that you're going to see a very, very high correlation between full moons and new moons, uh, picking almost the exact highs and lows of these moves. And if you add some, you know, patterns to it and stuff, you can really have some really possibly good trading opportunities. So this is why I, I watch these lunar cycles. These were also described by the Sumerians and Babylonians on, on uh, clay tablets uh, way back into the 5,000 and, 5, and 7,000 years ago B.C. Uh, Dr. Andrew Lowe in his book, The Evolution of Technical Analysis, spent 50 pages, uh, first 50 pages of that book, talking about the astrologers were actually the very first uh, technicians. So you'd have a hard time convincing the people of uh, of uh, Wall Street doing that. Now, if we if we look at the also if we look at the uh, relationship uh, to some of these other markets, in fact, gold is uh, 
we'll put we'll put the gold one up here, and you'll be able to see it. I, it, it works actually better. Uh, the the lunar cycles seem to work better with gold and with wheat than they do with the S and P, and I think that's because God made gold and wheat. The S and P was made by man. I don't know if that's the reason or not, but it does work better. It works good with the S and P, but uh, wheat is by far the best. Gold is second. So you know, keep an eye on these cycles because they do work. They don't work all the time, but they work a high percentage of the time, and that's what we're doing is we're trying to look at probabilities of what we're watching here now we're having a, a pretty much of a, a, a really panic a low I believe in the bond market uh, we're, we've had some tremendous amounts of uh, we'll just put, I want to put the weekly chart up in here you'll notice that we have uh, reached the uh, really strong weekly cycle here uh, I believe in the uh, these this happens to be the Treasury note market. Uh, we're down in this uh, 126, uh, 125 level. Uh, so that should be some pretty strong uh, support here uh, in the market. Now, notice that we've come down very hard here. Uh, in, in the bonds, we've, we've, we've dropped uh, 12 handles uh, just since the election, folks. I mean, that's just uh, unbelievable. That uh, means people are panicking. They're dumping their bond positions, and uh, evidently they're buying stocks. But no matter what it is, rates have already gone higher. So no, it doesn't make any difference what the Federal Reserve does, rates have already been raised. I mean, the Federal Reserve is behind the curve. There's no question about that. And uh, that's uh, that's unfortunate, but that's the way it goes. And uh, it's really uh, it's really an amazing thing. If we just look what's happened just in the, um, the and this isn't up to date yet. This is just as of Friday. But if you'll take a look at uh, what what's happened to the uh, high grade bond market, the junk not high grade high yield bond market, it's basically uh, you know it's in a free fall. It's taking out the lows of the Brexit, which was way down in the the June level. So this is another one that looks just what's going on. But we are going to have. Uh, an interest rate increase. Uh, my guess is it's going to have to be by December. I mean, they're, they're not they're not stupid people over at the Fed, and they realize that rates have already gone quite a bit. So they're going to have to do something to uh, correct that. So that's the bottom line of what I'm looking at in the currency now. The, the uh, in, excuse me, in the bonds now. Bonds uh, have already since the middle of the night have rallied over two handles, two thousand dollars since the middle of the night. Whether that's a uh, Enough of a test of a bottom, I'm not sure, but they got down below the one, the 150. They got below 153, believe it or not. We went to 152. They made a high of 177, you know, four and a half months ago. So uh, this market probably is pretty much, uh, you know, done its thing. That would be my, uh, that would be my guess. We'll probably be in, a, in a, a rallying mode now as they raise interest rates, and that'll confuse the heck out of everybody. But we'll see uh, what's going on. That's correct. Uh, we, we, they, they, they got to uh, 153.15 was the low, uh, I believe, in 2015. And we hit uh, 153.21. So that's pretty much of a, of a double bottom. So those are the things that we're looking at. But we're a major support here. So there, we'll be looking at some of these things a little bit later to see uh, how they're going to end up. Now, people have asked the question about, you know, the, the other markets that are going on. I mean, you, you see some of these markets, but the divergence that we've seen in some of these markets is, is really quite amazing. We've looked at that in the, uh, the S&P. We've looked at it uh, in the, uh, the uh, NASDAQ. Uh, also, another one that looks interesting is the Dow Jones transportation. Now, I, I believe in numbers. I don't know too much about that. But if you'll notice here that uh, we're right up against this 78% uh, retracement of the high we made in 2014. That's when that market topped. It went down for a year and a half. This is a bear market rally in the transportations, folks. There's no other way you can look at this if you believe anything that H.M. Gartley ever said. And this is a major ABCD correction in a bear market. That's, uh, you know, you've had lower highs, lower lows, and that is a perfect ABCD uh, pattern in the Dow Jones transportation. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty good, uh, pretty good thing to take a look at from the short side, uh, in my opinion. I am not sure. Oh, I'm sure they have an ETF for the for the Dow Jones. I'll let someone in the den tell me whether we have an ETF that is the reverse that you wanted to go short the Dow Jones transportation. Is there such an index? I don't even know if that, oh, that must, is that's, I'm not even sure what it'll be. Anyway, we'll find out as, uh, 
but this is the Dow Jones transportation is what I was looking at. Now, the Dow Jones, uh, the uh, I'm not able to take a look at uh, natural gas this morning, young lady, but I will try to do it tomorrow. I've got Bill Meridian coming on in about five minutes, and he's uh, he's certainly worth listening to, you know. So we want to listen to uh, what that's going on. But the natural gas, I believe, is still in a corrective phase, as I recall from looking at the charts over the weekend. I wouldn't touch that. At this level, another market that's breaking down very badly uh, is the crude oil market. As you can see, we're down another two percent, two and a half percent today, and uh, we're we're approaching, I guess, uh, forty-two dollars a barrel now. It you know the sixty-one percent retracement in this was at forty-three uh, seventy, and now we're at uh, forty-two. Uh, you know, we're 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 getting close to forty dollars a barrel, so we have to be very very uh, you know careful of this. The main thing that we want to watch here folks, is this stock market, because if it doesn't go charging ahead this week, pay very, very close attention. It's best to get, uh, best to give it one day just to see what happens, because this is a, you know, we just had the full moon just a few hours ago, so it's going to be interesting. 877-927-6648. Stay tuned for Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. <laughs> Okay, we're back, folks, and we have Bill Meridian of Cycles Research out of Vienna, Austria. Bill, are you there? Yes, hello from New York. 
Well, oh, you're New York. Ah, I forgot. Yeah. You. I know you have a place there too, but I didn't know that's where you were. When are you heading back? Uh, one week from today. Okay, good. The question that I have for you is, what's next, Bill? What's next? <laughs> what's next? You did such. A, you did a great job on telling us that Trump was going to be the man, but uh, how do you think this is all going to work out? Well, let's let's take a look at the. I posted your first chart on business cycles in here. Yeah. Well, first of all, let me explain that one of the reasons I thought he would get elected was because I do these very long-term projections on the business activity index. And for the listeners who are not familiar with that, it was put together by Ameritrust Bank based on any sort of economic data they could get to going back to 1790. They stopped updating it in 1988. I've continued it. I uh, My book, Planetary Economic Forecasting, is all about my analysis of that cycle. I isolated six planetary cycles, starting with Jupiter through the signs, which is 12 years long. And the very long-term cycle, which is, uh, I think Saturn, Neptune was the last one. It was 36 years or 38 years. And I put those together. And what they showed was a high in 2007, 08. And when people asked me, well, why would the, what would be the catalyst? And I said, a real estate collapse. And then it, the line stayed flat uh, until 2017, which is about nine year, eight and nine years. And the question from some uh, distinguished gent in London was, young man, why would the economy stay flat for ten, and, you know, that long? And I said, because they'll elect a president who in an administration that's not friendly to business. But then in 017, it goes straight up. And again, they asked me, well, why would it go straight up? And, you know, I said, well, first of all, the Republicans will win the midterm election. And second, they'll elect a Reagan-like figure in 2016. So that was the first, my first inkling was about six or eight years ago that uh, this was going to occur, but there was no Donald Trump on the scene. And so what you see right now is the business activity monthly. This is just using straight spectral analysis. And anybody who's been reading my reports knows for the last year, the 40.2 or 40.4 month cycle has been the most dominant over the short term. And so you, I was negative on the economy because of that red line topped and it, it is now at a low. So First of all, business activity is now going to start to pick up. And if we go uh, just below that graph, I said the catalyst to spark the growth is the dispelling of regime uncertainty. Steve Wynn once said that he did not know what crazy thing the Obama administration would do next. And second was lower marginal tax rates, tax rates and reduced regulations. That will encourage the people at the top to start investing. And of course, they make all the jobs. And so if we go to the page two, the okay. markets, and now markets are more or less telling the story. We had a breakout in the Dow Jones transports about a week or two weeks ago. Most of that strength was in the trucking and the freight stocks. Now, I used to be a trucking analyst when I was on Wall Street, and the prospects for trucking tonnage are directly related to the FRP index of industrial production. So this is what I would call a confirmation of the upswing that we're seeing in the BAI is now updated with the FRB index of industrial production. Uh, in addition to that, the base metals have risen. And now the materials sector, that is the equity sector, known as the materials sector, has been rising in terms of relative strength with no real improvement in earnings just yet. Now, the utility and the real estate sectors are least likely to benefit from higher rates. Their weak performance is a confirmation of higher rates. I think bonds are moving into a bear market. I had a very good 28 to 30 day cycle in bonds that started coming unglued in July. And when a short term cycle that's been working well suddenly stops working, it means that there's a bigger cycle at work. And I think it's more or less now confirmed that uh, this, uh, this bull market that began in bonds in 1981 is probably terminating. When I used to go up and visit Alan Shaw at Smith Barney in the old days on Wall Street in the 80s, he said that the longest bull market in bonds lasts about 35 years. So 35 plus 81 is 2016. So bear market and bonds. And uh, I just threw this in here. This is the top of the next page. This has okay. very, very little to do with the overall picture. But I've been involved in games with the game industry. We were in the computer game industry for six years. And each November, NYU, NYU's School of Arts now has a course in computer game design. 
and they have a two-day seminar called Practice, which was this past weekend. But I noticed since I got here, there were three, one, two, three, four, plus practice would be five, five different events covering six days by four different entities, four or five different entities, all announcing new games. Well, if the economy, the reason the game industry has been booming was because when the economy is slow, people stay at home and need a less expensive form of entertainment. If I'm right and the economy is picking up and look at the incredible glut of games coming on the market, then I think this is probably a top in this industry and it's going to get a, a bit tougher. Because uh, when I was at practice uh, two years ago, I mean, people were enthusiastic, but this year they, they sold out of tickets. And like I said, there were other entities offering other events, and the whole idea is to introduce new games. In fact, there's another one Thursday night. So that to me is a, um, a what do you call it, a contrary opinion indication. Mm -hmm. And if you go down to the table just below that, this is the RSV, the relative strength valuation of the sectors and you'll notice financials is now solidly in first place it had been last in the spring industrials are second materials are third energy is fourth technology is fifth i think technology is going to come back a bit down at the bottom you see utilities and real estate well if rates are going higher those two sectors will not benefit and of course financials will benefit mostly banks from lower rates i mean higher rates and uh, industrials, materials, energy will all benefit from growth in the economy. So if we go down, uh, here you see the next slide, annual quote. This is the longest term. When, when the short-term yep. cycles don't work, you go to the longer term. And here you see the 35-year rally in rates starting at the end of World War II up into 81. And then you, if you add 35, you get 2016. Uh -huh. So you see what George Lindsay might have called the mirror image or Bob Miner would call the one time cycle ratio. And then if we go down to. Bill, I have a question. Someone sure. uh, asked, what was the Wall Street firm you were with when you, uh, when you didn't, you know, when you didn't work for yourself, which most of the time you do, who were you with at Wall Street when you first started? Well, I first started out doing research for the life insurance industry, but then I worked for Value Line. Uh -huh. And then it was uh, Indicator Digest, Smilin and Safi and Payne Weber. And then uh, you know, I got laid off from Payne Weber, and that's when I met the Arabs and went overseas. Uh -huh. Oh, okay, good. We've got to take a break here. Um, sure. So we're going to do yes, that. I wanted to something. ask you. No, yeah, no, we're, we're, no, they have to sell something. They had to pay some bills. We'll have you back on. And then I wanted to ask you about this super full moon that we have in earthquakes. Sure. So we'll take a little break here. Do, do you do any work with earthquakes at all, Bill, or not? Uh, I've, re I've read it all, and I've applied it myself. I can talk about it when, when we come back. Okay, that sounds pretty good. So when we do come back, we want to give the folks information on how they can reach you there in the Vienna, Austria. So you'll be going back next, uh, next week then? Yes, Monday. Okay, we'll be right back after this break. Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. EverBank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, visit everbank.com slash TFNN to find out what they can do for you. Again, that's everbank.com slash TFNN. Visit them today. Everbank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. It's 2016 and TFNN has a brand new programming lineup to kick things off. Starting January 4th, Swim Lessons by Thinkorswim and TD Ameritrade will be airing five days a week at noon Eastern time. 
join hosts Scott Connor, Kevin Hinks, and Cindy Faber as they host their daily options program live at noon, five days a week with no commercials for the entire hour. Nico DeHaan and Paige Clark will be moving their program, Living a Primal Lifestyle, to twice a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 7 a.m. until 8 a.m. Eastern Time. Wake up with Nico and Paige and start your day off right. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour by Nadex will now be live Mondays and Fridays at 10 a.m. Start and end the week with the three hosts, Tom O'Brien, Tommy O'Brien, and Daryl Martin, as they break down the world of trading binary options and spreads. For all the details on the new 2016 programming lineup, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Binary Option Hour, sponsored by Nadex. Up next on TFNN. Okay, we're back, folks. We're talking with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research in Vienna. Bill, we've got your uh, chart of metal prices. We're looking at uh, zinc. Yeah. I'm looking, I'm just looking, I want to give everybody an impression, you know, in the very long term where we are. And zinc, you can okay. see the prices it was at back in 1890, which is kind of interesting. And uh, and uh, now if we go to copper, uh, copper, again, this is a very long term chart daily. It's still overbought from its rally, but it's retraced 61.8% of its prior decline. And um, the weekly chart, which is just below it shows you know the classic divergence of higher lows in momentum and a break to the upside uh, so i'm showing these because i'm you know they're, it's all starting to tell me a pick uh, a story and um you know that story or for, well what's going to happen for, uh, from here and in could you go to the i think this is the the horoscope of donald trump the last one? Oh, yes. The, oh, yeah. That's as clear as mud to me. But just a minute. Hold on a second. Yeah. You certainly nailed it. Hey, li pay attention, folks. The dude knows what he talks well, about. So go ahead, Bill. Well, let me just, for people out there who are curious and know a little bit of astrology, first of all, I know this is the right time because I know Marla and Tiffany from living in New York. So um, I can confirm there's an, a, a couple other charts floating around, as there always are with famous people. And if anybody wants to know exactly why I made that, prediction is if you, uh, uh, by secondary progressions, which is a technique of forecasting, if you, um, if you look at his progress chart, his progress sun in that chart equals Venus in the midheaven. Now, Venus would be popularity and the midheaven would be the career. And so, and if you look at Hillary's chart by solar arc, her midheaven equals Mars Pluto, which is a great anger, uh, you know, crimes committed in the past, and that is what tilted me in favor of Donald Trump. So now that that technical explanation is passed, uh, the, the one thing that concerns me here, well, first of all, let me just state that uh, somebody, he's got Leo rising with Mars there. I'm, I've got a lot of extra planets and asteroids in here, but Mars you can't miss because it's in red. And uh, this is, you know, an, an imperial sort of somewhat pompous um, approach to life or method of dealing with people. But it's the type of thing you need when you're dealing with, uh, you know, Iran and uh, other people like that. And um, I, I'll say this again. Uh, my friend uh, on uh, on Wall Street, I had lunch with him one week ago, Tuesday. The uh, he's an advisor to the government. The Joint Chiefs of Staff called him down, and they said, "Did you remember the do you remember the Reagan administration?" He said, "I sure do," as he's about seventy something. He's been an advisor to presidents. Do you remember Reagan called us in and said, start forming me a B team? I don't want the old answers. I want some new way of dealing with Russia. 
And he said, yes, of course I remember. He says, okay. He says, I want you to start forming for me a B team. This is the chairman of the Joint Chiefs talking to my friend. And so there again, you have another piece of evidence. That we're going into another Reagan-like era. And Mars Rising uh, is aggressive. Mars Rising is not going to bow to the king of Saudi Arabia and fly around the world apologizing for America's past sins. That I'm sure of. Um, so let me see. The one thing that uh, does concern me is coming up August, and note this August 2017, there is an eclipse. It is at 29 degrees of Leo. So that means it is conjunct as Mars. Now, of course, when something like that happens, you have to be concerned about violence or an attack on, on the president. Or it will certainly be very noticeable because it picks up his chart, even his progress chart gets picked up. So I would say the president has to keep very tight security in the month of August, plus or minus a month or so. And that uh, particular eclipse cuts the United States in half, um, north-south, uh, and it is very similar to the eclipse at the birth of Robert E. Lee, who was, the, of course, the Confederate general. That eclipse fell on his Mars and at his birth and cut the country in half. And, of course, he was the Confederate leader in the American war between the states. So my guess is they're going to, there's going to be some event here in America, either an attack upon the president or upon America or some event that causes um, some sort of split in the U.S., uh, I don't mean a political split, but I mean an opinion, you know, like uh, you know, young versus old, you know, black yeah. versus white. Uh, yeah. I don't know what that particular event is because this is all fairly new. Uh, I haven't really done a projection forward on his chart. I'm just looking at it uh, right now. The one thing that would concern me is that he would uh, not pay much attention to the debt, let the let the debt continue to increase. That is one possibility here, and. His chart reminds me somewhat of my father's, who was also a builder. And, of course, my father was somewhat similar. He'd build and build and build with no forecasting, which I guess is why his son got into it. And then when the recession occurred, of course, they'd get clobbered. They'd lose, they'd, uh, lose heavily, but they'd just uh, you know, tough it out and wait for the economy to turn up again. And um, that's the type of personality I see here. He just knows one thing, you know, go forward, period. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the type of thing, you know, the Leo rising is a, is a leadership sign. You know, the Mars means I'm not going to take any guff from anybody. And do you have any questions? No, this is great. I, uh, you know, we have to respect what you say because you're the only one that said he had a chance. Now, you've got another one. Uh, this is solar return chart that, uh, oh. that you have next, just uh, total eclipse. Oh, by the way, my friend Judith Ryan, who lives about, 30 miles north of here also predicted it because we had dinner a year ago and uh, she was we both had the same teacher Charles Jane yeah yeah but Bill you did it to thousands of people <laughs> okay well the, this, okay. this is this, this is the solar eclipse chart itself it shows an uh -huh. eclipse at 29 degrees of Leo that's a, a, a horoscope set for the moment of the eclipse uh -huh. and 29 Leo I wrote a book called predictive power of eclipse paths and, of course, when you write such a book and you look historically at eclipses, what do you do? You start going through them year by year and you, you see what happened. You study politics. And, and mm -hmm. most of the eclipses that are associated with war and conflict occurred at 29 degrees of fixed signs. Um, 1882, 29 Leo, uh, that was 29 Taurus. That was the uprising of the Mahdi in uh, the Sudan and the desert. That these All these eclipses and these paths are still active today. And... They just need to be triggered, and uh, the, all the eclipses associated with uh, the outbreak of World War I, World War II, it's always 29 Leo. So the reason may be because there's a fixed star there called Regulus, and Regulus is one of the four royal stars of Persia. And in 1979, when an eclipse fell at this degree, the Shah of Iran fell from power. So wow. this, this now pulls Iran in because Regulus is one of the royal stars of Persia. And mm -hmm. we already know that that's an issue. So, I mean – without looking yeah. at this and what is below oh here we go well here is the eclipse path i didn't realize i had put this in here but the area that gets shadowed is where you're most likely to have activity and i'll give you some uh, amusing examples from the past when i got into this many years ago um a long time ago there was an eclipse that went across the pyrenees mountains the you know the separation between france and spain and so well who the hell lives there what could possibly happen I turn on 60 Minutes, it turns out that they 
the uh, people cross the border regularly to avoid taxes. Well, the police decided to start enforcing it. Rioting broke out and people actually got killed. Now, of course, you would not know that unless you were there. I mean, it's a, it's a really remote spot. Well, the other time in the early 80s when I ignored an eclipse that was down in the, in the South Atlantic, because after all, whatever happens in the Falkland Islands? And of course, the yeah. Argentines invaded. For sure. We've got to take yeah, a break I... here. We'll be right back with Bill Meridian of Cycles Research. I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNM.com. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to the Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave Sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, we're back, folks, with our friend Bill Meridian from Cycles Research. Uh, Bill, you want to tell the folks yes. uh, how, how they can get in touch with you? Well, the, the uh, website is uh, BillMeridian.com, and my email is Bill at CyclesResearch.com. That's Cycles with an S, Bill at CyclesResearch.com. Okay, what and, do you uh, what, what do you offer as far as your services? I, I know you do a lot well, of private... A, yeah. I have a monthly uh, a monthly retail letter called Cycles Research. Um, I look at people's horoscopes, companies' horoscopes. I have an institutional service, which is where I spend most of my time, which is a weekly that goes out and covers numerous different markets all on a cyclical basis. And you know, but when we have more time, I could explain uh, that that cycles concept. Uh, by the way, how many minutes do we have left here, Larry? We have about one and a half. Okay, I just want to say that the the um, 
environment I'm envisioning, if rates are going to go higher and the dollar, you remember that long-term dollar graph I presented last time, that's a very tough environment for gold. So I just want to say I think gold, to me, has been acting not in Im impulsively, but as though it's in a corrective rally. So uh, I think it's a tough environment, and the last gold bear market lasted 19 or 20 years. So I think that's where we are. Um, I, I, I forgot, and I think dollar yen is going a lot higher. That was the last thing that I bought. I bought it last week, anticipating a breakout over 105.5, which has occurred. I see the yen strengthened a bit today, but I think the dollar is going a, a, a lot higher versus the yen. It looks like it's going a lot higher against everything. Do you think that the that the uh, that Italy will come out of the uh, uh, your, uh, union? I know they have some constitutional things on December fourth. Do you look at that at all? I uh, I can't. I hadn't thought about it very much. But let me just say, I started my last uh, weekly piece. I said uh, I had mentioned, as you know, uh, as you know, when you first inflate the currency, you get good bang for your buck as you add more dollars into the economy, and then it declines. They call that the mar the decreasing marginal efficiency of debt, to give it a fancy word. So I said, we now have a decreasing efficiency of media and propaganda where people no longer believe what they're being told. And I said, Brexit was number one, Trump is number two. And uh, so, yeah, they're going to have a very difficult time holding the year together. Thanks for joining us, my friend. We'll have you Thank on you. again soon. See you, you Larry. Bye-bye. You bet. Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Thank you, folks. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com.